During the Navajo Code Talkers' lifetimes, they experienced immeasurable oppression towards their culture and language from the American people. However, when the U.S. was in desperate need of an unbreakable code during a time of war, America turned to the culture they tried to eradicate for so many years. Dene, or the children of the holy people, or as many European immigrants will call them, the Navajo people, are people who have always lived peacefully in the Arizona region until 1863, when Kit Carson and the American government forced the Navajo to walk 300 miles on the historic Long Walk. And after the treacherous and dangerous Long Walk, the American government forced the Navajo people onto pieces of awful and desolate land that the U.S. government referred to as reservations. The land that the U.S. government had forced the Navajo people onto is one of the worst parts of the Southwest Desert. The soil was so barren of nutrients and it was near impossible to grow their precious crops such as corn and to raise their livestock, one of their only sources of food. Around the 1860s, the U.S. government began to reform attributes from the Navajo culture as the government began to forcibly send natives from all tribes to go to boarding schools where they were basically stripped of all features that formerly made them culturally unique, with their hair being shaved by force and them being taught that even speaking Navajo, the language that they had been brought up speaking, was bad. This experience carried over to the time of the Code Talkers, with this lasting for decades, and was the way that they ended up being raised. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. Fast forward to 1941 when the United States decided to enter the biggest war of all time, also known as World War II. During the war, the Axis powers, which consisted of Italian, Japanese, and German forces, proved that they were an adept in solving all codes that the U.S. and the Allies used against them. With the U.S. in the war and having all their codes being broken, the U.S. Signal Corps was in desperate need of a new code. A man by the name of Philip Johnson answered that call and proposed a groundbreaking idea to the U.S. that would lead to the victory of World War II by the United States. This revolutionary idea was using the reclusive language of the Navajo people as a form of encrypted communication for World War II to help with the war effort. The government officials that Philip Johnson pitched the idea to thought it was a great idea, but wanted to test it out first. So they got two Navajos and tested them using common military communication tactics. The test was an astounding success, and so the U.S. government set out to the Navajo reservation to seek them for help. First, the U.S. government recruited only 29 Navajos to serve in their Code Talker unit, but they later recruited more, totaling over 400. After the future Navajo Code Talkers were recruited, they were sent to rigorous military training to become Code Talkers. They excelled at their military training, except during the swimming portion, due to never being able to swim because they lived in the middle of a desert with no bodies of water to swim in. They were then shipped off to World War II to provide the military with a way to encrypt their information from the Axis forces, keeping crucial information regarding the battle at hand. During the Navajo Code Talkers' time in battle, they fought mostly the Japanese in the Pacific Islands such as the Anahuatak Atoll, Guam, Tinian, Saipan, and Iwo Jima during World War II. The Navajo during the war faced many close calls with death, not only from the Axis powers but from friendly fire because of their appearance closely resembling that of the Japanese. The Navajo Code Talkers were of great use to the U.S. Marines in battle. They, for the most part, would talk to each other in code, alerting them to a variety of aircrafts and other hazards. This made them an asset to the Marines protecting the troops, evidenced by Major Howard Connor, quote, saying, were it not for the Navajos, the Marines would have never taken Iwo Jima. After the conclusion of World War II, the Navajo Code Talkers were not immediately recognized for their efforts in the war. In fact, they were not even allowed to tell anybody, including even their closest family members, that they had contributed to the development of battle in World War II. Everything was to be kept strictly confidential until the code was declassified in 1968. They received no recognition until Ronald Reagan established National Navajo Code Talker Day in 1982, and several years later in 2001, when all of the original Code Talkers got the Gold Congressional Medal, while the 400 Navajo Code Talkers that followed behind the original 29 got the Congressional Silver Medal. Then after this, in 2008, George W. Bush passed the Code Talkers Recognition Act, giving official recognition to the efforts the Navajo people put into the war. 
In conclusion, the story of the Navajo Code Talkers is a story of oppression, triumph, and a will to help regardless of previous situations. Despite their past oppression, the Navajo Code Talkers worked to help the country they lived in. And they ended up playing a vital role in helping the country win the war. They were an extremely important part of World War II, and their work let them do amazing acts in battle. When the U.S. needed an unbreakable code in a time of war.